Welcome everybody to the record player tonight on New Humps. We are so happy to be joined by Danielle Andrew from Vancouver's Dear Rouge uh, to talk about the new their new song, uh, Fake Fame, among other things, uh, Dear Rouge. Uh, I know you guys are crazy busy doing press right now and uh, I appreciate you joining us. How are you doing? We're doing great. We are... We're fabulous. Yeah, we we released a single next last week and uh, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into that. So when it finally gets released to the world, you you kind of get on a little bit of a high as you start mm -hmm. seeing the stats and the radio plays rolling in. And then you get on it ultra high when people tell you that they love the song. And so exactly. it's, it's been going good. So we're doing good. Uh, the song uh, is called Fake Fame. Um, doing very well, as you mentioned on the radio right now. Uh, I keep constantly seeing it popping up in, in my social media. I faithfully follow you guys, of course, on social media. Thank um, you. Which, I, it's ironic because the song itself is kind of about, um, you know, fake fame and social media and that kind of thing. Talk to me a little bit about the song. Let me know, where did that concept come from? Yeah, so <clears throat> during like the kind of the deepest, darkest part of, of the COVID situation, um, we were writing for the album and I re read this book. It was called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. Um, and it was such a good, good book and a good reawakening of how important it is to rest and take time to sort of rebalance yourself. It was really good. I recommend it. Um, and anyway, so at this point, I just decided as I read that book, I'm, I'm going to delete my all my socials off my phone for a while and just see how this makes me feel because there's just so much anxiety kind of coming from the smartphone so i did that and i just felt like a weight off of me and a lot of creativity coming uh just naturally um also, also boredom was really special for that as well because that's really good for creating so just the amount of time and effort my phone kind of was taking from me at that point in my life was was really impactful like it was really surprising how much i had gained from taking all of that away so that's where the song kind of came came from just the idea that like what are we consuming is it actually good for us are we actually just is it a tool to just compare and sell us kind of false falsities and, and so it's sort of a rebalancing but the song came out of sort of those questions I was asking myself and just putting this social media world in its own sort of next, it's not real life, a lot of it. A lot of it's like a magazine or like a sales pitch to like a life you should have or what you could buy or what you, you know, um, it's just basically marketing on in your pocket. So just making that sort of statement of, I don't want your fake fame was sort of a, a rally cry against like the falsity of, of the social landscape right now. Um, at doing what I do, obviously it's, it's, you know, it's such an important tool for any musician or any, anybody in this. Yeah. Um, I always, whenever I put it down, I always feel like I'm almost, you know, hip, being hypocritical about it. Um, how, right. obviously it's still important to you guys to have that kind mm -hmm. of medium to go to. Yeah. So for us, we we kind of at the end of it, I did end up putting my my apps obviously back on and everything, but not with um, not without caution, basically just like setting myself up to not feel these anxieties or to feel like I'm letting the false kind of realities back in, and but just putting it in an appropriate place and then using it as a tool for community rather than like forced sort of. Yeah. And that's what Danny, she came out of it saying something really good about putting it on the proper shelf. And like many things, you know, they're a tool to enhance our life. And social media is great to be able to connect and to be able to follow bands. And it's, it is, it is a really cool thing. But then there's the dark side that it becomes too much. And so, and you can't say no, it's almost yeah. like going to the casino and like, you're down 500 bucks, but you're like, if I just keep going, maybe I'll make it back, you know, that kind of vibe. And it just, you just end up getting deeper and darker into it. And, and like, for us, we're like, we don't want to point our finger at anybody. It's not like a judgment. It's more of like questioning, you know, it's more of a question, I think, than anything. I have a, I have a nephew who's 14 years old and he went to career day and he said, everybody in their class, they said, what do you want to do for a living? They all said YouTube famous or social media influencer. And they didn't even have, and, and for me, when I heard that, I said, 
a social media influencer on what basis on what like are you just gonna poof you know like you have to have content to be a youtube per like what what, what is the saying? actual core of it yeah. it's like they're chasing the wrong they're not chasing the content they're chasing the results you know and it's like it's so weird it's messed up we're in a dark time um you guys release some when you guys first started out you released some independent stuff um you're coming up you know been around a long time now you're coming up on album number three um do you find yourself writing songs now that are a little more internal and personal than than they were when you first started out yeah we're kind of feeling a little more comfy in our skin i think <clears throat> It's funny, like even the name Dear Rouge, it's like comes from my hometown and we were like kind of embarrassed about that for a little bit, but it just seemed to be like the name that's stuck. And um, so as people kind of figured it out, I was like, oh, like it's not that cool. But then I was like, the, the premise of it being like, um, don't forget where you came from. And it's just kind of kept coming back now, like, okay, don't be scared of where you came from. Like for us, it's like, don't be afraid to go to those vulnerable places and be open about sort of your, our personal story. And so writing the songs kind of from that perspective has really helped this album feel authentic. And I think that's why Fake Fame being the first song is like a great song out of the gate because that's what we're trying to not do. Like we're trying to be really true to us now and like feeling good about just having those kind of closer conversations and yeah, yeah. <laughs> the uh when i first heard dear rouge it was on the radio uh, probably on the edge um when uh i heard i had came out and uh that song i mean i knew it was something special then because i love the song it was it's just such a Thanks. great song um that year was so great for you guys i mean you wind up you're, you're performing that song on the junos you win a juno for breakthrough artist um, did you feel pressure kind of coming out of that to what are we going to do next? I mean, was there, was that kind of early fame for you guys a little bit? Yeah, totally. We, we felt, um, the pressure for the second one, um, it wasn't necessarily negative, but it was more excitement about what our project could become, mm -hmm. you know, cause every, every album you want to make a step. So there wasn't pressure in the fact that it was like negative it was like positive pressure and we always tried to keep it in the right place because it's just too hard writing when you feel the pressure or writing something when you're choosing destination before you're getting inspired and um so we went through that with our sophomore and that's why everybody talks about the sophomore slump um for albums and now we're on the third album and i feel like in our in our side with this new album we've already won internally because we feel like these songs are special we feel like i can't wait to listen to these when i'm 60. they're about stamps of time in our life it's very vulnerable and inward directed um and so that's like we're starting from a strength and we're a lot of the label and the people who are hearing this album are saying that feels like De Rouge, but it also feels like Danielle and Drew. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of excitement on our internal team. And so hopefully that means that when everybody else gets the record, it's going to be really special. We'll translate there, yeah. uh, you, you guys have been lucky enough coming up that you've been able to tour and, and kind of, you know, uh, support a lot of really other really great acts. Um, you know, you've been out with the Arkells a couple of times. Mm -hmm uh lights um our lady peace uh you know now that you're in that position where you've been doing this for a while do you find yourself kind of is it neat to be in the one who's imparting advice on some of the younger band that might be coming up and supporting you now yeah i feel like for us we're we're getting into a place where we have more friendships and we can sort of engage and like in social like, sort of programs because Drew's been mentoring some some of the young guys and young producers and writers and so have I so that's been awesome. We're really looking forward to like touring again and having bands like Elevator and some of these new up and comers opening for us. Um, yeah, I think it's an amazing feeling to support and pass down and it's almost like the the full circle when you sort of start going up, you know, you you create that community around the next bands coming up. It's also uh, when we get to be in that role and hopefully we continually get to be in that role um, is that you get to do things differently. And I like that a lot because sometimes I 
being a band and getting into this industry, it's really hard. I know Danielle too, with, um, you know, she started reaching out to females, um, cause there's not a lot or bands tend to not look back as much because even if you're at the top of the charts, mm -hmm. you still can go somewhere bigger. And it's like bands that are big, it seems like they almost get going faster, further looking and not looking back. And I think it's a responsibility for artists who have succeeded to be able to mentor and stimulate the industry and encourage new people. Even if they see no gain from it, they just know that they gave back just like we all do in our life. You know, we all look to ways to give back and ours is specifically music. There's always gain from it, whether you see it or not, um, down the road, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's a slightly random question, but I, I ask it because I love the song. And uh, the when you guys did the um, Private Eyes cover for the um, Jason Priestley TV show, uh, the theme song from that show, for those who don't know, uh, was that a song that you guys already covered live when you were performing? Or was it some, how did that whole process come about? Was it where you asked to do it or? They reached out to us for the show and they said they wanted it like Deer Rouge. I talked to Daryl Hall and um, they we kind of got a rundown. We kind of said yes before we even tried it. Mm -hmm. And then when we did it, we're like, wow, this is such a beast of a song and such a special song. And so we it took us it it was harder than I thought it would be to cover that song. They're so um, they're so niche. Mm -hmm. uh, Hollow Notes. They they have such, and I would say that like Dear Rouge is kind of similar in that we have some like pop poppy tunes, but then we also have this like edgy rock side to us. So it made sense that we were covering it, but it was hard because it's kind of like there were some some parts where we were like we can't redo like we can't change that. How do we make it our own? So that was interesting. Um, being a part of that process, yeah. You but they asked us, and we were like, "Yeah, let's do it. Let's 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 go for it." Well, how do you say no to, you know, perform a song like that? How do you say no? What was that conversation like? Like <laughs> Yeah, uh, it was just it was it was brief, and I was respecting it. It was very musical, you know. I with that kind of thing, I'm like, "Hey, you know, respect what you do," and I, I kind of pour on compliments, and he's like, "Okay, let's talk about what we're talking about," because we didn't meet a person, <laughs> you know, so. Uh, it was just nice it was around the song yeah. and like making sure we were doing justice. They came through town. We were hopefully going to open for that. They asked us to, but we just had another show going on. So we weren't able to do it, but they're obviously legends and we were really honored to be a part of the show. Um, getting an opportunity uh, in, I think, 2017 at the Casby's, you got to perform um, the Tom Petty mm. thing with Sheepdogs and, and that maze. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't even planned, was it? That was something that just sort of happened that day, wasn't it? Yeah, that just happened. Yeah, those guys just asked us if we'd be down to do it. And we were like, sure. We'll just like <laughs> sing back up and get up there and do it. I hate being asked last minute to do that kind of stuff because I just like have to lyrics have to be ingrained into my brain because if i'm just like throw throw and go i can't do it so i'm always like oh, i don't know because i yeah i want to do it justice so i get nervous um, <laughs> having only heard so far the the one song from the new record um the progression obviously from from black to gold right through to phases and, and what can we expect from the new album uh as a whole um i think that there's a line that we threw around when we were writing this, where it felt like this is the record that we were trying to write 10 years ago. And uh, when we were writing Black to Gold, we were new. When we were writing Phases, we got exposed and opened up to a whole different world of music. And there's a line from a song that's not released yet that says, take me back to why we started in the first place. And early on, we wrote like a few songs and they were good. We were trying to figure out how can we make this album special and we kind of had this freeing and open opening up to why we started the band in the first place largely partly due to the pandemic where everyone assessed why they're living the way they're living <laughs> excuse me um we uh reassessed why we're doing what we're doing as a band where do we want to go what did ourselves what did we tell ourselves when we first started and um it feels very, very special that way for a record. So I, I guess you could say it feels like I think there's a little bit more um, there's more uh, 
highs and lows than we did on the last album. Uh, there's more acoustic guitar specifically and lyrics are more vulnerable and sung from Danielle's inner dialogue rather than just about random subjects. And uh, so it feels it feels very much like Dear Rouge, but a, a wider spectrum. I think sonically, it's a lot more organic instrumentation, but we also use like a lot of old synths and like really great, like this Selena, which is like a big synth we used on the record. Um, and just like a bunch of really cool, we recorded with Tom Darcy, who helped us produce the album in Toronto um, at Taurus record at Taurus studio and his studio is just packed full of amazing gear like he had this bass that like the gorillas bassist gave him and he had just amazing gear so we were just able to like just go nuts we used and we had like a saxophonist come in and we had like we had just tons of different musicians from different bands because we couldn't fly our guys out just due to the circumstances so we had like just different people from different bands that came through and it was really awesome and so it's a lot of organic instrumentation which i think is like more than any of the other records um when can we expect to see the, the rest of it? When do you have a release date yet? Uh, yeah, it's, we don't have a hard date, but it's going to be early um, 2022. Oh. Um, we, have a, we have another single coming out this fall uh, that's a deeper cut from the album, not necessarily a radio single. And uh, then, you know, it gets a little bit during the Christmas season, November, December, there's a lot of randomness happening. So we like to release it like fresh the new year and uh with some with some new tracks new goodies and so and that will kind of lead us into what next year looks like so it's really exciting i, I know you've started you, you've started doing a couple of live dates have you done you did the calgary did you do something in calgary we did calgary Stampede. we did edmonton together again um we've done a, like just kind of really quick one-offs in that way because they're still like there's still events being canceled and things, but um, it's been so nice to play any live show. It's felt like refreshing for all of us and just, just so we're so grateful mm -hmm. to be on stage. You did some uh, some online shows, but it's not the same, obviously. Uh, not even close. <laughs> I can't, wait, I can't wait to get you guys through Toronto again. Uh, I've seen you live and, and it's a great show. So I can't wait to get you guys through Toronto when the album comes out. Um, yep. The new song, Fake Fame. Um, thank you so much, Danielle Drew from Dear Rouge. Thanks for joining me. Uh, can't wait to hear everything else and uh, stay safe and we'll see you soon. Take care. Thanks for having us. Bye. Bye. Bye.